In 1997, Drs. Bradley King and Dennis Kincaid with the University of Idaho published a paper entitled Optimal Performance from Center Pivot Sprinkler Systems. In this paper, they stated the main disadvantage of center pivot irrigation systems is the high water application rates under their outer spans to compensate for the increased rate of travel. Hi, I'm John Johnston, president and owner of Irrigation Accessories. Welcome to lowering average application rate expands potential of center pivots. Let's take a closer look at what Drs. King and Kincaid were talking about. On a quarter mile pivot with 180 foot spans, the last tower travels eight times faster, which means eight times further than the first tower. Sprinkler packages are designed with incrementally increasing nozzle sizes to compensate for the increasing rate of travel in the increased area of coverage. That speed difference translates into 2.35 feet per minute at the first tower and 18.8 feet per minute on the last. In the same amount of time, the first tower is covering just 2.34 acres compared to 35.04 acres on the last tower, nearly 15 times more area covered in a single rotation. Here's a less cluttered graphic of the area covered that clearly demonstrates the difference. It is an important point worth repeating. The first tower is covering just 2.34 acres compared to 35.04 acres on the last tower, nearly 15 times more area covered in a single rev revolution. Within that same study, they also determined application rates under the outer spans of the standard quarter mile long low pressure center pivot normally exceed infiltration rate and result in runoff. But they did not just identify a problem, they recommended a solution. The application rate of low pressure spray sprinklers can be reduced by using offset booms on alternating sides of the center pivot lateral. Offset booms, or as they are more commonly known, boom backs, installed in opposing direction on every outlet on roughly the last third of a pivot, lowers the average application rate and decreases the application intensity. What are boom backs? Sometimes called offsets, boom backs are add-on accessories for pivots and linears to relocate or offset the sprinkler either 10, 12, or 15 feet away from the center line of the span. What Dr. King and Kincaid recommended is what we call innovative boom technology. Innovative boom technology is putting boom backs on every outlet, alternating in opposing directions on roughly the last third of a pivot. This can eliminate runoff and greatly reduce the occurrence of soil sealing, also known as crusting. Spreading out the sprinklers using boom backs, even with the larger nozzle sizes at the end of a pivot, can lower the average application rate and decrease the application intensity. Here's an aerial video of a pivot with innovative boom technology installed. You can visually see the lower application intensity at the end of the pivot. Because of the larger nozzle sizes needed to accommodate for the increased speed of rotation and area coverage, at the end of the pivot, the intensity should be the harshest. But by spreading out the sprinklers using boom backs, even with larger nozzle sizes, we have lowered the average application rate and decreased the application intensity. Let's look at a drop to boom backs comparison. Here's a cutaway of a pivot with traditional drop spray pattern. Now let's take that same cutaway and add 15 foot boom backs. Just by adding the 15 foot boom backs, we have gained a 66% increase in wetted footprint. We did not change the amount of water we are putting on, but we did change the amount of time it takes to put that water on. 
This animation of the two cutaways moving at the same speed demonstrates how boombacks increase the amount of time it takes to put on the same amount of water. You can see how it takes longer for the boomback spray pattern to move past the same point as it does the traditional drop spray pattern. By boom, using boombacks to create a larger wetted footprint, we have increased the soak time. Take a look at this graph. The dotted line being drawn is the infiltration rate of the soil. It will vary by the type of soil, but all soil types have the same basic curve. The line may be higher up on the graph for tight clay soils, or lower down on the graph for looser sandy soils. The bottom of the graph represents time. As you can see, the be in the beginning, the soil can absorb more water. But over time, the ground becomes saturated and is no longer able to absorb water at the same rate. The curve of the infiltration rate almost flattens out over time. Now let's look at that green arc. It's from a 45 foot diameter sprinkler. Anything above the dotted infiltration rate line is potential runoff. We want to flatten out that application curve to more closely match the soil infiltration rate. Let's look at that same pivot and add boombacks. As you can see, we have flattened out the application curve by increasing the time. Think back to the two cutaway animations passing the same point. The pivot with boomback spreading the water out took longer to pass the same point. We did not change the amount of water being applied. We increased the time it took to apply it. The area above the dotted infiltration rate line has shrunk dramatically, limiting the amount of water available for potential runoff. Now let's look at that same graph with three different examples. A small 20 foot diameter sprinkler, a larger 45 foot diameter sprinkler, and a 45 foot diameter sprinkler installed on 15 foot boombacks. There's something interesting about this graph. Grab the end point of the boombacks arc and drag it back to the 45 diameter sprinkler arc, or even the 20 foot diameter sprinkler arc. The area is the same. We have not changed the amount of water being applied, but we have increased the time it takes to apply the same amount of water. The area above the dotted infiltration line is now smaller, reducing the potential for runoff. Here's an overhead graphic of a wide wetted band created by 15 foot boombacks. Now let's overlay a traditional drop pattern. As we have shown, by increasing the soak time, we lower the application intensity, reducing the likelihood of soil sealing. If you pick a point under the traditional drop spray pattern, it will be watered by five different sprinklers. All sprinkler manufacturers recommend a 200% overlap for the best uniformity. All that impact to the ground by five sprinklers increases application intensity and can lead to soil sealing or crusting. By using boombacks, we reduce the application intensity significantly by spreading out the sprinklers. We have not changed the amount of water being applied. The overlap remains the same. Every point under the pivot is still being watered by five different sprinklers, just not at the same time. By adding boombacks, we reduce the instantaneous application rate, which in turn reduces application intensity. Instantaneous application rate sounds complicated, but is simply the application rate in an instant of time. By using boombacks, we increase the time it takes to apply the same amount of water without changing the overlap, lowering the application intensity. Here's an animation of a quarter mile pivot with traditional drops moving at average speed. We are applying 1.25 inches of water. Presumably you have done the calculations and this is the required amount of water your crop needs. It took 48 minutes to apply that amount of water. If everything works and you have no runoff, you have successfully matched your application rate to the infiltration rate of your soil. But what if you have runoff? What if the water being applied is not being absorbed into the ground? Then the crop is distressed. You're not getting the root penetration required for maximum yield. You're also putting fertilizer and other chemicals into the surrounding soil and streams while eroding your fertile soil. 
What needs to be done? Typically, the first thing people do when they see runoff is to speed up their pivot. Here's an animation of what happens when you speed up your pivot. You reduce the amount of water being applied. You cannot control the average application rate by the speed of the pivot. The average application rate is a constant determined by contributing factors other than the speed of the pivot. The average application rate is the same if the pivot is sitting still or moving at maximum speed. The only thing you control with the speed of the pivot is the depth of water being applied. As you can see by the animation, all we did is put down less water over a shorter period of time. Although you may have eliminated any runoff, you're not getting root penetration or the appropriate amount of water necessary to maximize yields. If you have tight soils such as clay or hilly ground even, or any other land that experiences runoff, you need a solution other than speeding up your pivot. Here's an animation of a pivot moving at average speed, but we have added boombacks. We're applying the same amount of water, 1.25 inches, but over a longer period of time. We have increased the wetted diameter, lowered the average application rate, and more closely matched the soil's infiltration rate. We increased root penetration, eliminated runoff, and we are poised for maximum yields. We also lowered the instantaneous application rate, greatly reducing the chances of soil sealing. We are now using water more effectively. We've talked a lot about average application rate. Let's take a look at what it is and how it's calculated. Average application rate is the rate at which the depth of water increases if applied uniformly throughout the wetted area. It sounds complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. Here's the formula. There's one constant, 72, and three variables. First variable is the flow rate, the system flow, gallons per minute per acre. The second is DFP, distance from the pivot point in feet. And three, the COV, the sprinkler throw diameter or coverage in feet, is the flow rate times the distance from the pivot divided by 72 times the throw diameter of the sprinkler. Here's a specific example for us to examine. On this particular pivot, we have a flow rate of six gallons per minute per acre. We're looking at 1,300 feet from the pivot point. We're using Nelson rotators with an orange plate and a 20 PSI regulator at nine feet height on traditional drops, which gives us a 72 foot throw diameter. After doing the math, we see that we have 1.5 inches per hour for the average application rate. Let's take that same example and add a 15 foot boom back. We still have the six gallons per minute per acre, the 1300 feet from the pivot point, but now we have that wide wetted band. Because of the 15 foot boom back, we have increased the throw diameter by 30 feet. So instead of the 72 feet, the throw diameter is now 102 feet. We now have an average application rate of one inch per hour, a 33% decrease. That's what we call innovative boom technology. We've lowered the average application rate and the instantaneous application rate. We've increased the soak time, eliminated runoff, and reduced the chances of soil sailing. We also have the average application rate formula in metric. The flow rate is in liters per second per hectare. The distance from the pivot point and throw diameter is in meters. We had a study done by Dr. Troy Peters of Washington State University at Prosser, Washington. Efficacy of boom systems in controlling runoff under center pivots and linear move irrigation systems. Again, it sounds complicated by that title, but it's a straightforward study of how boombacks reduce runoff compared to traditional drops. The study did not look at yields or crop quality, but this particular study, we wanted to quantify how much runoff is actually reduced by using boombacks. The numbers on the bottom of the chart depict the irrigation event. The dark blue bar represents runoff from traditional drops. The green bars 
represent runoff from boombox. You might be thinking runoff from boombox. I thought boombox eliminated runoff. For this study, WSU overwatered until they had some runoff to measure from both systems so they could compare the difference. The first event yielded a 4% reduction using boombox. If you think back to the graph with the dotted line representing soil absorption rates, you recall that when the ground is dry, it can absorb more water. Once they reached the fifth event, the reduction in runoff by using boombacks had already jumped to a significant 24%. Dr. Peter's study was published and is available online at the ASAB Technical Library, Volume 30, Issue 5 of Applied Engineering and Agriculture. It's also available on our website at boombacks.com. Click on Technologies, then Innovative Boom Technology and it's readily available for download in PDF form. That's what we call Innovative Boom Technology, or IBT, a 24% reduction in runoff by the fifth pass. In 2005, a large grower in California was trying to germinate carrot seeds with a pivot. The application rate required was too high for the ground to absorb, especially at the end of the pivot. With the guidance of a dealer, they decided to install boombacks on the last third of a pivot to lower the average application rate. Over a three-year period, the solution was so effective, they installed several more pivots. After that initial three years, I went down to California to interview the growers. This is what we told, they told me. We've compiled data on all the different ways of irrigating. Pivots, pivots with boombacks, hand lines, wheel lines, drip and flood. We determined using pivots with boombacks is more than a solution for carrot germination. We are now putting the water into the ground more eff efficiently and reaping the benefits. A 33% water savings, 37% increase in yields, increased crop quality, increased uniformity, and runoff was practically eliminated. The 33% water savings is coming from the eliminated runoff. We are now achieving deeper root penetration. All the listed benefits are generated by a more efficient use of water. When compared head-to-head, -head, pivots with boombacks are by far the most economical way to irrigate. We knew we had more than a solution for carrot germination. We are now putting the water into the ground more efficiently and reaping the benefits. If you look at the 33% water savings that is coming from the eliminated runoff, we are now getting that root penetration I spoke about early. All the listed benefits are generated by a more efficient use of water. There is now a possibility to utilize the advantage of center pivots in areas and on soils previously thought unsuitable for this type of irrigation. A lower average application rate produces an increase in yields, improved crop quality, and uniformity, all while conserving water. Using boombacks to lower the average application rate increases the potential for center pivots, including areas with a low infiltration rate or anywhere runoff is a problem. Water less, grow more with boombacks.